Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Zeiss Conversations on this hot hot June afternoon. We've got a great selection of guests for you today, a uh, mix of guests and Zeiss ambassadors and lots of good conversation about building uh, building conversations and building communities uh, all around using photography as as our art and our, our source of, uh, you know, of just how to keep people engaged. Um, today's episode, we've got our, our primary guest taking the center square there, Mr. Sean Lee from Detroit. He's going to be joining us with uh, our Zeiss ambassadors, Tracy Page and Mr. Kenneth Hines, uh, along with me, Tony, from Marketing at Zeiss. Uh, welcome, everybody. Hey, welcome. <laughs> glad to have you all here. Sean, I'm glad you could finally join us, man. It's good to see you in the flesh. It's been like, you know, uh, the whole COVID. I haven't seen you yet. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, COVID kept everybody away, right? And I have a shave, too. So, you know. Ooh, wow. Oh, you haven't. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. Um, we we've touched base about um about your organization and what you do in Detroit there. But if you could give uh, our new viewers here to the to the live stream, um, just a little bit of background on you, how you came to photography, how you came to what you're doing, um, in Detroit with Rock That. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, um, Rock That is my term for making life happen, right? So. Um, I will say rock that to any number of things. I'll say rock that to your grandmother, right, on her 85th birthday. <laughs> um, you know, it, it is just my term for making life. If anybody ever asks me or say, hey, can this be accomplished or can I do this? My answer to them will always be um, strategize and rock that and I'll stand behind you. So that's hence the term rock that for um, the photography conference. And it has uh, a bunch of meanings in that um, the people that we tend to serve are people um, who may be, be coming into photography, have no skill set at all, um, haven't, um, have no uh, network, right? They're coming in brand new, they don't know a thing, and they are nervous as all outdoors. And they look at the technical aspect of photography, they look at the business of photography, they, they look at whether they can make money at it, and a lot of people get kind of nervous and it's a little daunting and my answer to them is always rock that we will surround you we will be there to support you um and we'll we'll be there to help you kind of make it through it so awesome. that's what we do right rock that money rock that they ain't ready for it awesome. <laughs> <laughs> i kind of tease, tease sean too because it's also his nervous tick so whenever Sean has to have a moment to think, he will, in the middle of the sentence, he'll stop, he'll go, rock that, money, and then back to whatever he was saying. So it's, it's become part of who Sean Lee is. And I wanted to also take a moment and, first of all, say thank you, Sean, for being here with us today. But also, thank you for being such a great friend and influence to me. And I'm just so honored that you're here with us. I um, just, I chased this man down. I heard Sean speak about, four years ago when I was working with PPA and his stage presence is so dynamic and he's so engaging and um, everybody just wants to hear what he wants to say. But what Sean has wanted to do is panel after panel, Sean has set up diversity panels to talk to people about how to make everything more inclusive. And I don't mean just more inclusive as far as African-American and Black Lives Matter, but more inclusive, period. He's drafted me to panels and um, that first time I met Sean, I mean, I chased, a chased after him and I begged him, please let me be involved with what you're involved with because he just, he's got such a presence and he's, his ability to convince all of us to um, go on this ride with him is, is just, it's been an amazing ride and I'm looking forward to the future. But one of the things I really wanted to bring you here to talk about is how you've been building communities um, the diversity panels that you've done, where you're going in the future, rock that, bringing people in, the next gen. This was a program Sean did um, a couple of years ago that we've been participating with. I just, I really think that what you're doing, what you've already been doing, so many people are coming to the bandwagon now, bandwagon now. You've already been on this bandwagon. You've been preaching this for years and trying to get us to listen. So start a little bit for us about how you got started with all of this. What's been driving you to, to try to get everybody on the same page and inclusive. Oh, wow. Um, thank you. First of all, thank you for that, Tracy. You, you know, you, you're trying to make a, you're trying to make a dark skinned man turn red. You're trying to make me. <laughs> I'm good at it too. Aren't <laughs> <I>? <laughs> thank you so much for that. Um, 
and 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 yes and 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 it means so much to me that um that this means so much to you because um the work is it's a heavy lift right and we don't do it for attention we don't do it for uh, money we do it for investment in people and i'm going to say this um to you all because this is kind of what spears the work that i do and why i do it is that you know one day uh, I'm going to look up and hopefully, God willing, I'm 85, 90 years old, right? I want to be able to see a generation um, or the next generation of creative professionals be able to lead our industry in a positive direction and open up doors for other people, right? Um, I can tell you that when I came into the industry, I didn't have a network. I didn't know anything about professional organizations. Um, there was none of that stuff. It was just me out there doing stuff and I had to make money, right? Um for my home. I had I had two great jobs in a warehouse. I drove a forklift truck. A lot of people don't know that. Um, two great jobs working in warehouses. I got laid off of both of them within four months of each other. Wow. And so I had this camera. And so um, for me, while most people enter into photography because they want to, uh, they love it, right? It's a great hobby for me, it had to work. So I began to look at photography as a business right, and enter it from that standpoint. And so I started doing school photography and seniors um, because I could make a lot of money in a short amount of time, right? And so that's how business started to grow and I just kept my head down. Um, when I came on the scene as a speaker in photography, I, and I can remember this um, to the year probably, it was WPPI and I was speaking, I was platform speaking and out of 125 speakers, I was the only black man speaking at the highest level. And I was like, wow, I'm the only black man speaking at the highest level, right? I was excited. And shortly after that, a couple minutes later, I started to weep because I was the only black man speaking at the highest level, right? And it was in that moment that I, that I knew that it was necessary to start to open up doors um, for people. I also understand that it's not just a black thing, is that I have learned in my career from everybody, from um, all types of nationalities, from different types of cultures, um, black, white, it doesn't make a difference. You need everybody in order to live, right? In order to um, be successful. And so that's been, that's been the mission. I've been pushing really hard for there to be uh, multiple cultures. And I always say this, um, is that diversity is not the exclusion of white people, it is the inclusion of everyone, period, right? And so we need everybody at the table working together um, so that we can build a strong network, strong community of photographers that can help each other um, and see the next generation through to success. Money rocked that. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a nervous I'm tip. disappointed if you didn't do that. <laughs> I'm glad I was paying attention. <laughs> he, he has this little bit of shock value. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yes, yes. So, yeah, that's what it's about. It's um, and you know, recent events going on with George Floyd and um and Black Lives Matter and all of that stuff um brings a little bit more awareness to what we're doing. But for the last seven years, I've been working really, 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 really hard to um to kind of engage everybody and bring everybody to this new type of thinking um, that we all need each other. And there are little old ladies that are retiring from um, jobs that wanna become professional photographers and they need to be covered, right? It, it doesn't matter what color they are, uh, where they come from. And, and so there, we are built to invest in people. And so I am the CEO of uh, the Multicultural Association of Professional Photographers. And it is our mission to open up doors um, for everybody and, and provide a safe space and a safe community um, for, for which people can grow and become full-time photographers. So since we've started two years ago, um, we have had uh, three people go full-time as photographers, uh, had studios open. We've had folk that have shot for the NFL. Um, and done uh, and shot for teams and things like that. We've had people that have taken on major pro projects. We've had uh, several people get certified as photographers, um, get degrees um, and all of that stuff and all within the community, right? Helping each other to get there. So 
Um, that's part of the mission, part of the plan, and that's what we do. And we bring people like Tracy in, um, and we're going to have a conversation about bringing uh, Professor Hines um, in to talk to our people and expose them to professionalism and people that are really good at what they do and folk that really want to invest in people. Um, that's what we're about, right? It's not money driven. It is people driven. That's one of the things that I appreciate is that it's, first of all, the Multicultural uh, Professional Photographers Association. I am not, I am a member. So he doesn't just mean, you know, African American and black. He is talking about everybody and spanning all cultures. And Sean has put me on diversity panels, you know, as a female, not just as a female, but as a Caucasian female. And he's, when I've taught in Detroit, Sean has specifically said, you know, hey, I need you to teach something other than African American skin type so that we can expose everybody to being able to do different types of work. And so I love that one of the things you, you want to do is you're open to, you're inclusive to, to all groups to bringing people in. But I also love your sense of mentorship and, and leading people who are new to this or even not new to this, but still need a, to hand up. And that is, that is so hard to find. Yeah, we're about, that's what this is about. See, I'm a, I'm an old fashioned, like church boy. I've been serving people um, for my whole pretty much adult life. So that's what this is. And we need everybody, right? Like, like this is not, I, I tell people this all the time. This is not like black power, do away with all of the white folk uh, type of stuff. This is not what we do. We need everybody. We need everybody's voice and I want everybody to participate. The only way we get through stuff is to learn together and to grow together. And the only way you tear down walls, right, is to engage everyone, period, at the end of the day. Now, when you talk about tearing down walls, it's a difficult thing to do. We have to ask people to face um, truths, right, and truths that they may not want to. But at the end of the day, we are people. And even though we are photographers and this is our profession, money, and this is what we do, um, and we want to bring the best of the best in, we also want to engage everybody and understand everybody's story, right? Um, and that is just very, very cool. There's a story, uh, Tracy, that you can tell that that I just can't, I can't do it. Last year's Rock That, we had a uh, Diamonds are, are Made Under Pressure panel. And it was, it was all women of... Um, of all, every color, right? We had white, we had black. I think we had uh, Russian in there. There might've been a Latino in there, I'm not sure, right? But we had all these women talking about how hard it is to be a professional woman in photography, right? There are women today uh, who are performing at some of the highest levels that are still facing um, isms today from men, right? They're still shunned. They're still pushed in corners. They're still denied opportunities because they are women. I said that to you the year before on that panel, remember? Yes. We, were, we had a diversity panel the year before, and I, and I said something about being a minority, and Sean looked at me, and I said, no, I'm a female, and there is a glass ceiling. It is still really hard for us to get accepted as female photographers at a certain level. And it is, I mean, and it is true. And your diamonds under pressure, I think that gave us an opportunity to discuss that. Yes. And we're going to do that again next year, um, as well as engage, you know, generations, years and all of that stuff. But it's a, it's a labor of love. I absolutely love it. Um, to give you an example of maybe what we've accomplished since then, I think the year prior, um, last year was as a result of being on speaker selection committee for Imaging USA, we had 18%. Um, photographers of color speaking at um, at the top levels, right? That that was pretty good. So out of 100 speakers, we had 18 speakers of color, right? And that was a result of, uh, of um, I think, because of, of me being on speaker selection committee and pushing really hard um, for us to have speakers of color there. The previous year, um, it was less than 2%, right? So we went from less than 2% to 18% speakers of color at Imaging USA. Um, because of the work that we're doing and trying to push really hard to open up those doors and, and, and get people um, in a direction of professionalism. So rock that money. <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah, kind of even looking at my career of, of, as a photographer when I started professionally in 2009. And, you know, I have seen even, you know, being to the level that I am right now, you know, you don't see a lot of minorities or women 
in photography. And, you know, I go through, sometimes I, I take the time when I'm not working to go through and look at some of the booths of the photographers that are listed with different companies. Yeah. And you'll, it's just always, you know, interesting for me to look at all that they have represented. And I'm like, my goodness, you know, it, it's far as for me personally, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a rarity. Um, I know when, when Zeiss brought me for Photo Plus last year, hmm. actually, even for that show on Imaging USA, I actually had people come up and like, you're actually with the brand? Hmm. I was like, yeah. Hmm. And they were like, congratulate. Like, they were just so amazed and, you know, and uh, a friend of mine had looked at like kind of like the, the the list of speakers that were there and i think there were just as far as uh, black photographers i think there were only two and i was one of them <laughs> and i was like really i i and so i have as when i teach workshops and things like that you know i i want everybody kind of that same philosophy where it's you know we we kind of understand you know the type of atmosphere that we're living in but it's about everyone helping one another right. and to, to make those changes. That's right. That's great, dude. Dude, your stuff is awesome. And um, and and thanks to Zeiss for, for breaking ground. And I, and I just want to personally say this, right? So long before all of this movement stuff and all of this stuff is um, is on the forefront, right? Um, I remember talking to Tony and, and Tracy about you know, investing in the next generation of creative professionals. Our conference is, is built around multiculturalism, right? We have a lot of people of color um, that come to our conference. And Tony's like, well, we want to invest in the next generation of photographers, right? People, uh, people of color. And Zeiss has been there um, doing that. When, it, when, there is no, when there is no call to action, right? Um, and, and I just want to acknowledge that because, um, you know, people have a call to action when they, you know, when they, when one's announced, but I, I think it's worth saying that, that Zeiss has invested in, um, in our students in a generation Z in photographers of color, uh, before there was a call to, right. And so I, I want to say that, and I want to say thank you. Um, and I want to thank Zeiss for, for them putting you out front, uh, Kenneth, because that, that says something, right? That that speaks volumes. It, it speaks to they are interested in the quality of your work, um, um, not just the color of your skin, right? And and that's an amazing, amazing thing. And I thank you all for that. So rock that. Well, thank you for those kind words. Uh, you know, and and really, it it was one of those things, Sean, when uh, when Tracy got us together. It it was it was uh, what really excited me about the work that you're doing is is reaching out to the, the the younger set the gen z the 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 kids that may not have the opportunity to get a camera in their hands they understand what photography is because we all see it but there's really a transition from your smartphone to better quality equipment and that's what you were bringing um and and you know, I, I say this on the cinema side all the time. There is a call for a greater depth and a greater amount of stories to be told now. And that's really that's what I look for when I want to partner with someone like you or when we want to bring Kenneth on or Tracy on. You know, it starts with that conversation, that dialogue, and it really drives through the passion that you as creators have and how you take that out into your communities. And that's what really excites me and gets me involved. And I appreciate your kind words, you know, certainly, uh, you know, we're all here to make a difference. And that's what that's what, um, you know, that's what we're trying to do together. Rock that. That's hot. That's the so, hot. So, Sean, one of the things that also fascinates me is the programming that you're doing in the inner city of Detroit. And I know that you do a lot of um, work with um, entrepreneurs being able to brand themselves. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, wow. Um, my, my story is an eclectic story, right? Um, <laughs> my entrance into uh, the photography world and professional photography, I, I think, is uh, has escalated because of my love of people and my love of community and my love of my city. Right. And so, as you all know, Detroit has uh, gone through bankruptcy. And that's sort of when my career um, kind of launched. Right. As Detroit was going through this rough patch. Um, and so who starts a business when your city is uh, has no money, right? And so um, as a result, we wanted to, we were finding ways, me and a couple of partners of mine, we were just finding ways to build and boost the morale 
of uh, of Detroit. And so we did stuff like Detroit's largest selfie, um, which um, which every local news outlet uh, came on board with and ended up uh, being featured on Good Morning America. Right. And ended up getting all of these online views, these millions of online views, something as simple as a selfie. Um, so that was a project that we did in Detroit. Right. Just building morale and wanting to invest in our city. I'm going to tell you this, that um, <clears throat> all of the projects that I've been a part of have our photography projects, but they have come directly from wanting to invest in people. Right. So I, I would say that that is a Thing. When you want to invest in fix stuff and you become a part of that fabric of fixing stuff, people notice who you are, right? So um, that's a tip for anybody that's looking actually really to build business. Look to invest in your community authentically. Um, I, I want to I say that. So what ended up happening is that from that, um, from that Detroit's largest selfie, it set us in a position where we were seen by city government, local government, right, um, state government, and things of that nature. And so it opened up a project called, uh, it opened up to a project called Motor City Match. And so this was the mayor's um, federally funded program to invest in entrepreneurs and building owners. And so what it took was startup entrepreneurs and building owners and brought them together. It fixed the space, right, and then granted them money to be able to partner together so business owners could start new businesses. Um, I was the official photographer for that project and it was my job to photograph the business owners against the space that was, that was to be rehabbed. Um, just an amazing project that helped to bring um, Detroit up. It gave me an opportunity to know all of the business owners and new business owners within the city of Detroit, which was really, really cool. And they were doing some really cool stuff. And then my photos led that storytelling of a project that was helping to build um, the city, right? So that was um, that was pretty that was pretty cool. Money rock that. Um, and then I'm gonna say from there because um, Tracy walked away. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> She's back. That, that led to uh, <laughs> that project um, led um, to me being the official photographer. Um, of Rebrand Cities, which is a project where uh, we partnered with WordPress.com to put 10,000 small businesses around the country on the grid. So um, it was it was my job to photograph the small businesses that didn't have a website, to photograph them for their website from WordPress, right? Which was really, really cool. And so we went around the nation photographing all of these small businesses and training them um, how to be more efficient small businesses, training them in branding, um, talking to them about how their imagery should look. I photographed them and then they got a WordPress website and that closed the digital divide, right? In which case, trillions of dollars are being left on the table because people aren't transacting. So that was a very cool project that I was able to be a part of and kind of travel all over the place um, and engage small business that way. Money. Y'all know what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Go no, no, I was just gonna say, I love that it gave you a chance to start working with um, a whole new level of clientele and, and start um, a, a whole different side of your business, it seemed like. Yeah, it, um, it, it helped to kind of transcend, right? So um, I think the best thing, especially, especially when you're talking about business, and, and it's one thing to be good at photography, it's another thing to be good at business, it, it kind of helped me diversify um, my business, right? And, and my client base. And sort of look at that a little differently, right? So that when things like COVID and Corona hit, um, you still have a base of income and, and a base of clientele who don't stop uh, because a pandemic has hit, right, um, the world. So yeah, it's it's been good. I can't complain. It's like, what, hmm, imagine that. You you build a better community and, and then you get business from it too. Yeah. Just <laughs> what? What you say, right? Because at the end of the day, People, people do business with people that they like, right? Sure. That they like, that they trust. Um, um, they want to do business with those folk. And people, you know what I found out? The city of Detroit, people in Detroit love Detroit. And anybody helping to change the narrative of Detroit, they want to do business with, right? 
Um, and, and that transcends photography. I'm, I'm going to tell you, people who don't care nothing about photography, if they know that you're trying to help Detroit, you know, I'm also a mentor. I mentor kids. People love success stories of children, right? And if you are in that fabric or woven into that fabric, people find a way to work with you. It's just something, it's something about that, right? They want, people want to be tied to the great stories. They want to be tied to the wins, to the comeback stories, the underdog. Um, stories, all of that stuff. Um, and that's what I found myself a part of, not trying to be, but, you know, when you fighting for a cause or you fighting for the little, the little person or whatever, right? Um, you're on the side of right in most people's eyes, I found out. Go figure, right? Sean, I think if you weren't fighting for something that we'd have no Sean Lee, it's yeah, like yeah. part of who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Kenneth, what were you saying? Oh, so I was going to say, you know, as far as doing this, you know, I, I'm sure there have been a lot of stories that, that people have, that have gone through your program and shared with you. You know, are there any moments that have been very special to you that have kind of given you a different outlook as far as how you approach this or has just inspired or influenced you even more to continue doing more of this and, and going to an uh, even larger audience? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. I'm going to tell you, there's one story. Um, there is a young lady who is a part of our team. Her name, her name is Tremaine CA. Um, Tremaine came to our very first conference in 2016. She was a, she's a, she was a school teacher. Tremaine has four children. Um, Tremaine was so inspired that she quit teaching immediately and became a professional photographer like immediately and so i felt a a personal need to make sure she was successful right so here's a married woman four kids teacher and now is following her passion of photography full time right and so this is what is for me in my heart like the road hasn't been smooth right she's had a chance to experience the ups and the downs the the, the, I don't know if I want to keep doing this, right, has gone through that stuff. And last summer, I had the opportunity to tour her studio right before she opened it up, right? Oh, wow. For me, that was amazing because she didn't, she didn't knee jerk it. She took all of the advice that was given. She did all of the research. She had planned extremely well and had saved and had worked her behind off. Um, and, and I relished in the moment because this is why we do the work that we do. There was no sense of competition. There was no, oh, you know, make sure you don't take my clients kind of deal. It was total and complete investment in, and I want to see you successful. And we are here to make sure that you that you make it through, right? That was, for me, that was a very, I'm getting emotional now, right? Um, it was a very emotional moment because it was the pureness of what I want for everybody, right? Um, who looks like me, you know what I mean? Um, it's the pureness of, because nobody invested in me. I hit my head on a lot of walls. I, I hit it going 300 miles an hour, right? Um, and and got it wrong a whole heck of a lot of times, right? And so here's the opportunity to invest in um, somebody and we do that and they start to realize their potential, right? And not only um, become good and great photographers, but also become successful business people, right? Become well-rounded enough to see the ebbs and the flows, right? The, the ups and the downs of everything and still, have um, have something in them to be able to stay and stick around and grow. That that meant something a lot. So that inspires me, uh, Kenneth. I'm gonna tell you, like that kind of stuff inspires me. Um, seeing people like you with Zeiss, that stuff inspires me. Where where everybody else might be a little nervous and everybody's going for themselves, I really work extremely hard to make sure that we can cover people, right? That is my mission. I'm all right. I've been doing this for 16, 17 years, right? Um, Sean is okay. 
You know what I mean? And I'm going to be okay. But I want to see, God forbid, you know, as sexy as I think I am. <clears throat> right? <laughs> you know, as fit and trim and with this six pack that I got up underneath this shirt right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, Rock that, Sean. <laughs> right. <laughs> Rock that. <laughs> Did you hear Kenneth? Did you hear his voice? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I think it's it the microphone. Right, yeah. <laughs> sure. But, but no, no, no. But real talk, like, like, I hope that one day when I am old, that we that we're able to pass along an industry that is more representative of our nation, right? Um, and that we raise creative leaders that are not only good in photography, but are also good business people, also great community people, and also have learned to give back, right? Learn to invest in people. It's, a, it's important um, to me for us to invest in being well-rounded. That's what will strengthen an industry and keep it, um, keep it going strong for a long time. You said something that was very important too, as far as in, in doing something like this, that it's about not competing, seeing someone else as your competitor. And I think that's something that a, a lot of people sometimes take and kind of run with and anything that they do to where they don't want to, to give that kind of full input or assistance to anybody because they don't want them taking their clients. They don't want them doing this or that, that they may be doing. And, you know, one thing that, that I can honestly say is that when I joined Zeiss, you know, they took me in immediately on the very first day that I ever met, you know, like Tracy and like our trade show in, at Photo Plus was our first time ever meeting. And they know me very well that I'm the quiet person. I don't I don't say anything when I'm in groups or at the, any of these events. And Tracy came over to me and she introduced herself and she was like, do you wanna grab some lunch? And I, I just was like very surprised. I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, okay. Like I, you know, this woman who's up there on stage uh, with me at Zeiss and, you know, I'm like, why does she wanna talk to me? Like I'm, I'm the new person here and, you know, this is my first time. And what I love about being with them is that they, we all see each other as family and we help one another. You know, even doing this, this show here, you know, we wanted to step up for Tony and say, hey, we want to help you. You've been there for us. We, we want to be there for you. And, and that's how we, we kind of operate. We're just a family. We take care of one another. And, and I think that's so important in this type of industry and what we do. And I, I think a lot of people, just don't don't understand that and and realize how impactful it can be and how much of a, a of a benefit is focused on like ten clients. It's like it's a world of people out there. Your next client could come from a different country. You don't know that, but people are so closed minded and and just thinking about that one area that they're in. Yeah. And so I thought that was very important about you know you don't see others as your competition. You're there to really help them and guide them. Absolutely. That's yeah. I think that's something that we all felt um, at Rock That, especially. And I mean, Tremaine's daughter, I, or one of her children, I think, uh, modeled for me at, at yeah. Rock That. Might have. And I think I, I think I met her when she was still teaching. But it's not just Tremaine. It's it's everybody feels like family up there. Everybody wants to help everybody else. It's the, the whole community of, of participation. And they want to help Sean. Sean has been trying to run this when he's so stressed out he can't see his, his hand in front of his face. And everybody else is behind the scenes trying to fix things for Sean because they are his family and his support system as much as he is their support system. Which is, I think, I know, I just that makes me want to cry. I think that that is an amazing thing. When Sean last year, his wife was having health issues and Sean was having health issues and Sean has had health issues again this year. And and uh, you've lost some family members and friends in the community. It's your whole community, but not just your whole community, because now I feel like I'm a part of it too. It is our whole community that gets together and lifts each other up. So you have led that, but the whole community now wants to lift you up too. And it's kind of a really special thing to watch. Wow. Well, don't make me blush. I, I already said it. I'm I, really good at that, aren't I? <laughs> you know, don't make me blush, right? but, but, Yes, and and to your point, um, 
to your point, Kenneth, competition doesn't help anybody. I'm going to tell you our first two years, the first two conferences we made absolutely free, right? We did that on purpose. It was strategic because the best way to change culture is to, uh, is to invest in people. And people were so tired of being sold to, right? That in order to do something and change culture, I think we, we need to do something, um, drastic, dramatic. And so we made the conferences free. We did three days of intense training. Um, some of the best of the best, right? Um, there at the conferences, we spared no expense and we made them free for everybody to come, right? And so that's the type of investment and that's the level by which we are willing to invest in people because that's how important it is. The long-term the long term rewards are are phenomenal. It is so much greater, right? To to have a person in an industry maybe for the rest of their lives, it's worth it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It really is worth it to invest in people. Um, it tears down walls you wouldn't believe. It tears down hatred. It tears down um, even people feeling some kind of way about you, right? The skepticism that most people approach each other with right? Coming to the table with skepticism. Well, if I offer, um, if I offer you myself and I say, Hey, it's all, anything I got belongs to you. Don't you worry about a thing, right? It immediately tears and melts, um, all of the bad stuff away. The story though, I mean, when I, I chased you down and, and, um, God, I forget what city we met in the first time, but then I saw you in, um, in Las Vegas and uh, we were going to try to meet for breakfast or something to talk about this. Um, this is, you were so open and receptive to me and you didn't know me from Adam, but yet I said, I want to do this. And you said, okay. And I think that's part of the community is, is welcoming everybody in. And when we, we look around and we're trying to build these communities of people, it's not about just putting out a statement and, and making the statement now because something has prompted the statement. It's about who we are every day of the week, every moment of the day. And being that open and receptive and wanting to lift people up is part of who you are every moment of the day. I hope it's part of who I am every moment of the day. And Tony and Kenneth and everybody involved in this, it's, this is the part of building the community all the time that I think we need to, to be moving to and not just when our attention is called to it. Yeah, that preach. You preach it. Go ahead. I thought I heard. I thought I heard you. I thought I heard you hawking there. I thought you. I thought. I thought I heard you. Amen. You know, you know I mean, you got the. Amen. Can I get a rock that? I thought I heard that come from you, Tracy. I, you know what I mean? Rock that. You may run from me and run the other direction if you'd heard that before. Yeah, that's so true. That you, you, you have to be, you have to be the person that you decide to be a hundred percent of the time, right? That it. it that's just how life works, right? You can't just turn it on um, when, you know, when you feel like it, right? They become kind and become nice. You're never ready, right? So just be that person 100% of the time. Um, and you never have to worry about anything. So we do the work because we love people, not because we are looking for anything from anybody else, right? You know what I mean? So, and there it goes, yo. And listen, y'all stuff is hot. Like, Ken, if your stuff is hot, Tracy, your stuff is amazing, right? Like I, I sit up, I sit up and I look at you all's work, forget competition. There is so much for me to learn. There is so much that I can learn that I would rather befriend you, right? I would rather befriend you and get your nuggets, right? Then sit up and hate on you. I'm not, no, we don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. Our industry does not have time for foolishness like that. We can do so much more together than we ever could separately, right? Um, and I would rather you critique me, you know what I mean? Than me hate on you because you good. Please, ain't nobody got time for that stuff. Money rock. We You're do have right. a, a question in the chat box from our-, our uh, Zeiss and Greg <laughs> we, we love Greg. Greg is, well, I say this every time about how incredible Greg is. Greg is probably blushing on his end every time I say that. But uh, Gray is asking, Sean, would love to hear your opinions on the importance of the camera in history now. Mm. Well, the camera has always been a visual storyteller, right? Um, the importance of the camera now is, is just as important as it has always been um, in visualizing. This is what I, what I love about photography is that it is as equally technical as it is creative, right? Um, 
that's what I love. It's you have to you have to have an engineer's mind, right, to go through formulas and everything. But now the artist, right, the the person who is the storyteller can take that technical tool and then paint their photograph or their picture, at, you know, in a sense. And so at a time now, with people feeling as visceral as they are, to to, to be able to take your paintbrush or that camera. Um, and tell your story. It is, it is, it is important. It will always be important. As important as the poet, as important as the journalist is, is as important as the professional photographer is to our society. Absolutely, rock that. <laughs> yeah, that was a good uh, question from Greg. Um, yeah. He's before I became an ambassador, Greg has always been the, that go-to person of, you know, he's always been a wealth of knowledge for me. And he was, and he, he was just always willing to share things with me. And, and before I joined, you know, he, him and I had a long talk when we were in, I think it was Monterey for the uh, Sony condo event last year. Hmm. And I always attended his masterclass. That's how I first ever met him. And I think the most recent one that he did, he actually said, well, you always come to these. And he was like, you're pretty much going to hear the same thing. And I said, Greg, it's not about the, the lesson that you're actually teaching on rock concert photography. It's about the, the experiences that you share that I'm listening to, because that's when I always get something that's different. And I said, if people look at it outside of the actual rock concert aspect, they will get something that every photographer, doesn't matter what you're photographing, can learn from. And I said, that's what I'm listening for because mm. he shares such valuable tips. But if people just look at it for the subject at hand, which was just the, the, the concert aspect, they would miss it. And, you know, I, I try to take in as much as I can from, from all of these great photographers, mm. you know, and, you know, I've, just built up. Oh, I love the, the photo that you took of Greg Waterman. I didn't know you had a photo of him. That oh, just yeah. makes me love you even more of all my great buddies. Um, and so, you know, I've learned so much from Greg. I've learned so much from Tracy and, and a lot of the other ambassadors as well. And, and it was an experience that I had years ago when I was starting out. And from how you came about with this, I see it was kind of similar. It's like you went through a situation for yourself where you didn't have anyone helping you out. You made your mistakes, you, you made your, your, your errors and you learned from them. And that was something that I encountered where I had a photographer back in 2009 that said that I would never amount to a good photographer. Mm. And I kept that in my mind. And I, I, to this day, it's something that I still repeat over and over. And it's not to repeat it as because it was something negative. I use that to kind of empower me to want to do even better than I can today. Oh, that's right. And, you know, I- I Look at me now. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I started my community to where I help everyone. I, you know, people talk about how, how can you answer all these messages that you get? But I'm like, because I didn't have that 10 years ago. When I was looking for help, when I needed assistance, I didn't have that. I didn't have someone that I could, you know, reach out to and say, hey, I, I'm going through this and I need assistance with this. Can you help me? And so that's why I always position myself to help everybody. I don't care what it is, who they are. I always want it to be something to someone that I didn't have 10 years ago. Rock that. Well, we need you at Rock That. We need you to help some people at Rock That. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what's Sean. On? Yes, ma'am. Tell us a little bit about what is next for Sean Lee and the next Rock That concert conference that's coming up. Um, wow, that that what is next for Sean Lee? Um, there's a lot going on. So I am um, I am director of photography for uh, TEDx Detroit, and so I have uh, we are actually you know I, I don't know if I can I can't say much, but you know. Well, maybe I should just, I shouldn't say anything. I, that's right. I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Mess around and get in trouble. But um, so I have opportunity to kind of the, the, the folk that have been learning and growing with us, um, we kind of employ them for TEDx Detroit. And so we have a photography team that photographs the whole conference for TEDx Detroit. And it's around 5,000 people. 
um, that we do annually. And we are charged with photographing that entire conference. Now, of course, that's been postponed this year. Um, but that that kind of engagement will continue where we start to bring photographers on and we teach them in real time, right? Um, how to shoot an event, and what we're doing, and we upload in real time and we go through all of that stuff. Um, this year with MAP, we are uh, engaging more training. So we're doing a lot more online training. Um, this year, we're engaging people like Terry White, who's Adobe's worldwide designer, photography evangelist, and people like Terrell Lloyd, Super Bowl um, photographer for the San Francisco 49ers, um, who leads them. We got all of these great speakers, um, including we got to have Tracy on um, to teach about uh, headshot photography. We're increasing um, all of that kind of stuff. We're partnering with different brands um, that also will do training and exposing people to professionalism and photography, the business end of things. We have kicked up our business training uh, a great deal because it's, it's not it's important not to, to be just a good photographer, but to also be a an entrepreneur, right? Because you are a small business owner. Um, and so it's important to us for you to be successful in business as a photographer. It's one thing to take the photograph. It's another thing to be able to charge for it, right? Um, and so that has been really, really, really important for us. We, we're getting ready uh, for next year. So since we have another year to get ready, we have been really hard uh, on the grind, making stuff happen for uh, Rock That next year. We're making a big investment in Generation uh, Z um, next year coming up. Panels, we're gonna have kids um, in panels. We're gonna have luncheons for kids. We are partnering with uh, local colleges uh, here in the Detroit and Michigan area to bring students actually into the Rock That Conference so that they can be exposed to professionalism um, in photography and creativity. We're adding video to uh, our segments in Rock That. So being able to storytell using video um, with some of the best videographers that in the area uh, will be really, really cool. So there's, Tracy, it just, it don't stop. Money, it, it you know, I'm, I'm trying to do grown up stuff. I'm trying to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> Oh, and now you're making me, making me blush. <laughs> I'm going to say something smart, like, you know, you're not going to stop till you're in the grave, Sean. We all know that, but then, no. then you had to throw me into it. Right. right. <laughs> no, I, I love the whole idea of bringing the next generation along. I think that this is a really good focus for, for this to go to. I, I really, um, I've appreciated what we've done the last few conferences. I almost feel like we haven't done enough to involve the next generation. So bringing in the college and bringing in the students and really um, pushing that whole concept, I think is the right way to, to, to evolve. I know also I see you speak on a, on a somewhat national level at WPPI and other conferences. Are there any other areas outside of Detroit that you're, you're taking this message to currently? Um. I mean, with, with Corona and COVID, I haven't outside of of online on my computer. I haven't I haven't spoke much um, anywhere outside um, of that. There are some partnerships with uh, with other cities, but they don't necessarily involve the message that we're 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 talking about. What I do would love to speak to them um, is that recently I had a birthday. I did a fundraiser, and what I, we didn't mention about Rock That, and what we didn't mention about Map is that as a conference, we make it a point to do um, social give, good, right? We do give back, right? You're familiar with that, Trace. You remember but I, I, I love the give backs. I mean, usually you have me somewhere in downtown Detroit during the give backs, and I don't That's get to do true. both. That, that is very, very true. So um, as a conference, we it's important for me that we, we be more than just a photography conference. It's important to me that we uh, invest in people because you never know where you may end up. So we partner with the Neighborhood Service Organization, um, which is an organization that, that takes care of our homeless population here in Detroit. And so every year as a conference, while Tracy and uh, Tracy and Audrey and, and Terry White and, and Terrell Lloyd are out doing photo walks, right? And, and, and Jen Lewis and Jeff Rojas and all of those folk are out doing photo walks. We have a separate set of volunteers um, that take uh, catered brunch to a uh, homeless population at the NSO Bell building. So it's 160 residents that are uh, in transition from homeless to try, trying to re 
engaged society and we cater in food. We cater in brunch for them. And it is an amazing time. We also do uh, care packs for the Tumani and the Sheila Clay Center, which is their crisis center. Um, and so we do care packs and we do cater lunch. We do it every year, right? And so I had my birthday because the conference wasn't this year because of COVID-19. I had my birthday and, and I asked people to donate $2,000, which would feed 160 people and do some care packs, right? Um, and we do about $10 per, we figure about $10 per person um, gets them a great amount of food to be able to eat there and, and, and about two plates uh, for them to be able to take up to their room and all of that stuff, right? We get a really good deal. Um, and we asked for two thousand dollars. That was it to feed 160 people and to do some bulk supplies for care packs. Um, we made three thousand, right? Uh, which was really really cool, right? And so um, that's what we'll be doing um, this year, about mid July. Um, coming up, we will be catering brunch for uh, the NSO Bell Building and its residents, and doing care packs for the for the Tumani and Sheila Clay uh, Center, which is. That's the that's the other part of that that I'm proud of, right? I I, I never want us to lose um, the basis of who we are and where we are, and I don't care. And to your point, um, Tracy, I don't care how many stages um, I stand on, right? The one thing I always want to be mindful of is that um, it only takes a couple things in life to happen for all of that to turn around, right? And so, being mindful of of where I am and where I come from, and making sure that we serve people. Uh, 100%, right? No matter what my skill set is, no matter what how many speaking opportunities I get, and, um, no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I'm teaching and how I'm teaching and all of that stuff, at the end of the day, people are always a part of what we do. And so it's important to me. So rock that. Well, I have to, I have to say that that is, uh, I, I will warn anybody out there who wants to be Sean Lee's friend is that Sean will hold you to making these things happen with him. So um, Sean makes us all want to be a better person and build these communities. And we are so appreciative of everything you, you do that you're doing and that we get to be along for the ride. And Sean, we just want to say thank you so much for coming on with us today. Yes, And absolutely. being a part of this and, and having this conversation with us. And I know you and I are talking about doing some Instagram lives or Facebook lives going forward. And I'm always up for the conversation. Awesome. Shoot, I gotta tighten my six pack up for that. That's one. right. You know, what I mean? you know what I'm saying? I gotta do a couple crunches to get it all the way tight. You know what I mean? Yeah, just just one or two. You know, it's one or two. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, really, it's just it's one big it's one big pack. That's yeah. That's all. As a friend of mine used to say, I I I don't, I, I don't have a six pack. I got a whole case. You gotta. <laughs> I got to remember that one. <laughs> well, Sean, I want to thank you for coming on with us today. Um, here in, really, all the work that you're doing is is just truly inspirational. All the give back you're doing, all the social work, um, it's just amazing. And then working with um, the up and coming, the the new accomplished photographers that are that are coming up fast on our heels. It's great to 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 get that there and and to know there's somebody like you who is who is out there and is uh, is, is is taking that word and 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 making good on it and we appreciate the work that you're doing sean thank you so much tony i appreciate it and thank thank you kenneth thank you tracy for uh for you all having me on it's, it is an honor right when i say i'm, I'm turning red I, I really am honored thank you guys for having me well thank you my friend i appreciate it money rock that they ain't ready for it bring the back <laughs> <All them. laughs> say, right right. <laughs> say they ain't ready for it say and then do your hands like this tony you know what i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm ready for it yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. I have to practice. I have to work on that. Some. Just want you to so. know, Tony. I'm gonna do a screen grab of that for later. <laughs> Thank you. It's there. It's it's on the interwebs now. It's on the YouTube's. So. Well, Sean, you know, Sean, thank you so much. It's It's been a great conversation today. And Tracy and Kenneth, as always, for leading our conversation. I, I thank you for being here. My gratitude to all three of you. You do tremendous work. Um, and uh, these 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 conversations just really bring that out and I'm really pleased. Thanks to all of you and thanks to our audience too today. I'm glad that you were with us on this uh, conversation. We've learned a lot about what Sean does and how we all can give back to the community and, and help foster uh, a, you know, a, a, a sense of, of community through art and through creation and, and help the other uh, those around us get better at their craft at the same time.
Thanks again for joining us. We'll be back again next Wednesday, next week, uh, with another conversation here at Zeiss Live, Zeiss Conversations. See you.